Hey everybody, this is Farron P. Wiley of The Worth Wiley Show and I'm jumping in here with a quick video because I heard an interview today on NPR radio as they were gathering perspectives from evangelical Christians on the um, racial disparities that are occurring in this country. And I want to play a little bit of the interview for you, if not the whole thing, uh, just so you can get a perspective and then I'll come back with uh, uh, my rebuttal or op-ed in this because um, uh, it's just been uh, sticking in my craw all day. So I just thought it'd be easier to make a video about it. Uh, I'll be back. I've been looking at how the current calls for racial justice are opening up new conversations within evangelical Christianity. Yesterday, we heard from Pastor Erwin Ince, who leads the Grace D.C. Institute for Cross-Cultural Mission here in Washington, D.C. I do believe that there is a heavier burden on churches that have been historically exclusively white to actively engage in breaking down those barriers and pursuing a unity and diversity. Today we'll hear from another pastor, Todd Wagner. He is lead pastor at Watermark Church in Dallas, Texas. He says in the beginning his congregation was predominantly white, but has grown more diverse over time. After the emotion of last week, the national protests calling for racial justice, Wagner started his sermon on Sunday with a provocative line. Well, let me tell you what I'm not going to talk about today, and that's racial reconciliation. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because that's impossible. First of all, when you talk about race, you may as well be talking about unicorns. And forgive me if you're here with your child, but unicorns don't exist. And neither does race. I was trying to help people understand individual responsibility. So many times, like I've had friends for, for decades that have been praying for revival, like it's this invisible thing that will happen out there somewhere that there'd be a group of people that would be magically and mysteriously revivified that would lead to transformation and, and peace in our world. And what I always want folks to remember is that revival happens in individuals, not in some mystical group that's out there. And the same is true with racial reconciliation. And again, I even defined race. Race is not a biblical term. That's a social construct. So there's one God, one Father, one Lord. And so we're all of one blood. Can you unpack a little more why you want to avoid the word race because I have heard from numerous other ministers people of color who say that unless you name the thing that is dividing people whether or not it's a social construct that the wall will still be there that the reconciliation part of it won't happen I always start by asking people well tell me what you mean by race and so what I'm trying to do is help people understand words have power and words have meaning. And so racism ultimately isn't the problem. Sin's the problem. And one of the things that we do is we treat different people groups or tribes or ethnicities. We group them into these categories so that we can be oppressive to them because we're sinners. And that is always the problem. So when we talk about racism and injustice not being the problem, what we're saying is they're symptoms of the problem. And I have no problem talking about oppressive acts and specific injustices. But I want people to understand the origin of those injustices and hateful acts. How do you see your role in this moment? I mean, in this particular moment, and I know you talked about the ineffectiveness of racial reconciliation, that it has to happen person by person. It's an individual journey. But what is your role, especially as a white man leading an evangelical church, what is your role in facilitating that kind of individual epiphany or reconciliation? Most people have never met a real Christ follower. They meet a lot of churchgoers and nominal Christianity is one of the greatest poisons that this country has ever run up against. And the greatest evil in America today is the dead, feckless church. The church that has a form of godliness but denies its power, the power in their own life to see their own sin and their own patterns of injustice. And I think when people run into those kind of Christians that aren't trying to accomplish a political agenda but are living according to God's kingdom agenda, I think you're going to see healing in our world and hope in our world in every way that God intended. Todd Wagner, pastor at Watermark Church.
in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, Rachel, I've enjoyed the conversation. Bless you. Okay, so here's the problem I'm having. Um, I don't like to call anybody stupid, but uh, this has got to be the most theological, inept statement I've heard, perhaps ever, or in a long time. Um, now, a little background on me. I have had a lot of experience with church and evangelical Christendom. Um, and um, through my, you know, I was a former pastor myself, and through my uh, study, um, I would never arrive at a conclusion that something doesn't exist simply because the word doesn't appear in the Bible. And what falls apart here is, while he makes the comparison to uh, the inexistence of race or racism, uh, because it does, the word doesn't appear in, in the Bible, and he makes this statement that uh, it's like unicorns, and unicorns don't exist. Except that by that logic, that wouldn't be a true statement, since the word unicorn actually does appear in the Bible like nine times. Um, nextly, the word homosexual doesn't appear in any Bible until about 100 years ago. Um, but I'm sure that he's not willing to deny the existence of homosexuality based on that. Um, and there is the fact that race and discrimination does occur in the Bible. When the Bible uh, talks about um, the Jews um, being separate from the Gentiles, the Jews being the chosen nation of God, and they were not to have anything to do with anyone who was not a Jew, which they were, uh, anyone who was not a Jew was a Gentile. And uh, they weren't supposed to touch them, they weren't supposed to socialize with them, they weren't supposed to uh, uh, have anything to do with them, or else they would have been pronounced unclean. This was the whole purpose of circumcision, so they could be identified as people that were set apart. And this all had to do with their ethnicity. So these themes are uh, 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 throughout, or Im Im implicit, and, and, th and throughout the Bible. Uh, and I think that a lot of times evangelical Christians and Christianity in general um, um, likes to uh, characterize these themes in different ways in order to make themselves feel better about doing the stuff that they do. And whether they realize they're doing it or not, um, you know, he made the statement that um, uh, 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 feckless uh, Christianity is the... Um, uh, greatest poison in America. I'm not quoting him directly, but um, I would say that can you be a Christian without using the Bible? Because that would probably make Christianity a whole lot better. Because in my opinion, the poison is in the milk. And as long as you keep teaching these themes uh, that are repute with white supremacist ideologies that uh, have, um, d have, uh, have formed the, the, the culture that is in this country from the very beginning, then um, uh, unless you can get rid of that piece, then you could probably start talking about um, Christianity being something that could be a powerful influence in uh, the change. Now, um, uh, uh, this this idea of racial and um, e ethnic division is probably the main theme of the New Testament. Paul, the apostle, was um, going up against some of the uh, hardcore uh, Jews of the time and telling him that the work of the cross and the, the Jesus' death on the cross... Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus was the, the great equalizer. He was the one who leveled the playing field. Uh, he's the one that who, 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 who made the love of God available to uh, the, the Jew first and to the Gentiles. Women, um, 
gays, people of color, anybody who was not a Jew was allowed in because of the work of the cross. And if you want to talk about it from a sin perspective, this was the, the sin that Paul was dealing with in the New Testament. It is the sin of New Testament culture to, uh, um, that, that, that uh, Paul was trying to prevail upon. In fact, I think that this was the very uh, uh, thorn in his flesh that he described. Uh, everybody says they don't know what, what, what exactly it was, but I think Paul was struggling with the fact that he was a Jew and actually had to relinquish that idea to realize that everybody who was not a Jew was just as good as him. Peter goes down to Cornelius' house and has an epiphany and realizes that uh, 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 these Gentiles uh, were able to receive this, the, the, the Holy Ghost uh, in the same way that, that they had. And he realized he had a, he had a change of mind. He had uh, uh, about, uh, about the, the differences that he had previously been taught um, about um, these, this separation that needed to happen between these um, uh, different ethnicities. Uh, so the Bible is, re is replete with these ideas. And so until you can reconcile that, then um, I, I don't think that Christianity is going to have very much of a platform to... Um, or I should say evangelical Christianity, uh, from, from the ideas that he's communicating, uh, he's not even willing to talk about race. I think these are the reasons why you don't want to talk about it, is because you want to sugarcoat it. You want it to be uh, the, 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 the same old-time uh, religion that you used to have, and it was good enough for them, and it's good enough for me. But no, it hasn't ever been good. And um, if you want to continue to... Uh, put yourself in uh, some kind of relevant conversation about the things that are going on in this country, you need to deal with that. I'm signing off here. That's what I need to say about that. I'm moving on. Have a good day. Bye.